Hey guys, Squatch Reloading here. There has been a ton of interest in reloading lately. I've got tons of questions. Um, I've seen a lot of interest on the groups. And in fact, I just put out a video a few days ago or last week on what my advice would be to you thinking about getting into reloading and what you should get. And I said, get a single stage press to start off. And I, I firmly stand behind that. And one of the big reasons is with a single stage, you quickly master the art of setting up dies because you have to set it up each time you change a step in the process. But uh, again, like if this is what you're after, go for it. It's just a little bit more cumbersome in the beginning, but all the, all the same principles apply right here. You're just doing them all at once. But with that being said, I wanna get into a quick video series on the guy thinking about getting into reloading and showing them how easy it is to make quality ammunition off a single stage press. So I'm gonna get into what we're gonna load on and all the parts, all the bits and pieces and little bits of advice along the way. So stick around, let's get into it. Okay, so here's what we're gonna use. I have an RCBS Rock Chucker Supreme. It's a fantastic single stage press and we're gonna use the components that are probably most representative of if you bought a reloading kit. So I'm gonna go through what you need to do uh, pistol caliber cartridges, and we're just gonna kinda of go through them. I don't have any particular order, but obviously you need the press. Um, we need, depending, or any caliber that you reload, you're gonna need shell holders for your single stage press. Now the RCBS, they use a standard shell holder. All of your other presses, your Lees, Hornady, all of those single stage presses are gonna use these shell holders, and in fact, they also fit over here on the turret press. So anything with a standard shell holder, you're gonna need these for the caliber that you're gonna reload. You're also gonna need a set of dies, which right here we have a, uh, a, a set of Redding dies here. Um, these did not come with the extra or the factory crimp die. Um, so I'm using a Redding crimp die along with a seating die. And I've talked about this before. My preferred method is four piece dies one that does the sizing, decapping, your expanding, your seating, and then your crimp. Um, I'm not a big fan of this uh, combo seat dies, um, seat and crimp dies. And the reason being is if your cartridge, if they are not all identically the same length, you're gonna run into issues, whether over crimping or under crimping, or causing the cartridge to bulge. Now you can remedy that by trimming all of your cartridges using the same head stamps, but for pistol caliber, uh, I think it's it's a waste of time um, because we we like to do bulk loading um, in nine millimeter or 40 Smith, or if you're doing some target stuff, maybe that's the route you wanna go. But I think uh, the seating combo die, while it has its place, it just doesn't have its place in my reloading room. So some of you guys may disagree with that and that's fine, but I'm just telling you what I like to do. So there's enough about the dies. Now, even though we're using carbide dies, uh, when I'm running on my single stage or on my turret, I always use imperial sizing die wax. You can use any lubricant that you want, um, or you don't have to use any, but I prefer using the sizing die wax. It seems like I get uh, more consistent uh, size, more consistent um, stroke of the press, everything runs smoother. So that's what we're gonna use. Of course, we need our powder and our primers. For projectiles, we're gonna use some of my, my home built uh, cast powder coated projectiles. We need a way to deliver the primers into the cartridge. Now you can use a hand primer like this. A lot of these come in your kits, um, but all of your presses uh, should have for the most part an on press priming um, option, which this RCBS does. And it's my preferred way to set primers, especially when I'm running in small batches. Where this comes in handy for me, I use this a lot on um, I don't run 223 in high volumes over on my Dillon, which I probably will eventually, but I do, you know, several hundred at a time, and I can put the primers in real quick with this. Uh, so that's that's where that's place is in my reloading room. We're also going to use a beam scale. This will be representative of what comes in most of your kits, so we're going to use that. And then for um, our, our powder charge, we're going to use this uh, RCBS Uniflow powder measure and most of your kits are going to come with something very similar to this. So this is what we're going to use uh, in this series. So, oh, another important thing, and it's not a necessity, but 
man, does it make life easier. And uh, this is a, a shell block or a cartridge block, um, your loading block, whatever you want to call it. But um, this one's a universal, so it has a lot of different diameters on it. This one's from RCBS, and it uh, makes life a lot easier when you're counting. We're doing going to do uh, 50 cartridges, so this holds 50 cartridges nice and easy. Not only will we use this to count, we're also going to use this for inspection, and then we're also going to use this to denote where we are in our process. So let's get started. Okay, guys, the first step in getting this uh, press set up is we need to install our shell holder. So most of your die sets are going to come with a shell holder. I know a lot of the Lee sets and the Hornady sets and even some of the RCBS sets is going to come with a shell holder. Um, if they don't, then you're going to have to buy those separately. So the shell holder is basically cartridge specific and mainly they're numbered and uh, they're not all numbered the same by different brands. So there's a couple cross references, cross reference charts out there that you might need, but make sure you get the right shell holder for the cartridge that you're going to load. So I'll show you how easy it is to install. All right, so here's our shell holder. And again, the, pur the purpose of this is to hold the cartridge into the press and center it up on the RAM. So it's real simple to install. Basically, we're just going to raise the RAM up a little bit and there's a slot here that corresponds with the bottom of the shell holder. So we're going to just uh, push it in and they kind of snap into position like so. And for me, being right-handed, I like to clock this around about the 7, uh, 7.30, 8 o'clock position so I can install those nice and smooth with my left hand. So that's it as far as your shell holder goes. The next thing I always make sure is right is the correct primer cup here. Now on most of your presses it's going to come with one for small primers and one for large primers. So in this series we're going to use large primers and I've already verified that this is the correct primer cup. So how this will work is it's going to lay in like so and then as we cycle the press it's going to drop down and come up through the bottom of the shell holder and install the primer. So I mean if you want to use your hand primer uh, you can do those ahead of time but I like to uh, prime on the press so that's one thing you got to be aware of and one thing that you got to make sure that you set up correctly. Alright so we're going to set up our sizing die and I just wanted to kind of show you guys real quick if you look at your sizing die, it's going to have a decapping pin. Uh, some of them are adjustable like this one here. If you look on top, you can loosen this lock ring and adjust the depth of that decapping pin. Usually a fuzz less than a quarter of an inch um, is plenty. Uh, but you just want to make sure that it goes completely through the cartridge. Uh, in our case, we're going to, all of our brass has already been decapped. So it's kind of irrelevant, but I always leave these in. Uh, just in case I miss one. So on uh, when we set up our sizing die, the way I do it on a single stage like this one um, is I raise my ram all the way to the top. And then I'm going to bring my sizing die down until it touches the shell holder. Once we get it down there. Okay, so I'm touching the shell holder. Now, in this press, we want to do a slight... Uh, cam over to take the slop out of the linkage and the reason we do that is so we have a consistent uh, size every time. So to do that I'm going to now that I've got the die all the way down against the shell holder I'm gonna drop my ram a little bit and give it about a quarter of a turn and then make sure that I'm getting a good uh, positive engagement of my ram in the handle and I'll paint it down here so you can see uh, what it looks like. Okay, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about as, as far as the cam over action on this or the preload. I always call it preload because we're really just taking out the slop. Um, you know, this is a positive stop press anyways. Uh, so what we're really doing is taking out all the slop. So you can see I'm engaging the base of the sizing die here and I don't have a full stroke on my handle. So what I'm doing is I'm going to push down and I'll, I'll move you down here a little bit. I'm going to push down on it. And you can see that it there's you know about a half inch of engagement there, and you can feel that there's a slight bit of pressure on it. So that's what I'm shooting for. So now that we have it loaded up per se, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this lock ring down. And I'm not gonna tighten it up all the way. I just want to keep it from moving because um, I'm going to 
actually tighten this die up with a cartridge in it. So I have one sitting here. So I'm going to back off. I'm going to put a cartridge, unsized cartridge, in my shell holder. And I'm going to bring it up into the die. Make sure that it's cammed over. Everything feels good. It's not wanting to jump back under under a spring tension so it's all set where we want it it's stick the handle sticking down so now that I have a cartridge in there I'm gonna go ahead and take my wrench and I'm just gonna snug snug it up a little bit so our sizing die set so I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that uh, double check that in the case gauge here real quick all right now that we have a cartridge sized I'm just gonna confirm it in my case gauge and it fits right in there I mean it's drops right into place. Um, you can also double check these dimensions um, from your SAMI specs. It's uh, available in your load book. But uh, that's that's what we're looking for in sizing, guys. We want to have a good, good fit in our case gauge like so. So we're going to call that sizing die set up. So this is where your load block is going to come in handy. Um, I've got 50 cartridges in here and I've purposely and this is my method guys you will work out how this works best for you but since I know all these need sized and none of these have primers in them or if they did they would be spent primers so in this step I'm gonna size and install the primer and as I work through this load block I'm going to put them in upside down like this with the primers facing up and I'll show you why in a minute so let's get to sizing these all right, so we're gonna go ahead and size these. So I'm gonna put the cartridge in my shell holder like so. I'm going to raise the cartridge up into my sizing die, making sure that I follow through completely on my downstroke. We're gonna go ahead and put these primers in too while we're at it. So I'm gonna raise my primer cup up, place the primer in, and I'll show you the correct orientation here in a second. So now on our downstroke, we're going to, you're gonna see this uh, arm drop into place and it's going to install the primer on our downstroke. So once we bottom out, we're going to push forward and then the primer is going to install for us. Just like so. So now I'll jump around here and I'll show you uh, how this primer setup works in more detail. Okay, we're going to go ahead and size this cartridge. Remember, all the way down, get your lock out. At this point, we're going to grab a primer. And as you can see, this is going to be the business end that's inside the cartridge. And on the outside, this is where your striker hits. So we're going to put it striker face down, just like so into the cup. And then on our downstroke, you're going to see it drop inside the ram. You always want to make sure that you got your cartridge nice and centered up and then push forward. And then it's set your primer. So as you get into this, you're going to pick up little tricks along the way, like short stroking the press like this. I don't need to go completely all the way down. Um, that way I don't have to mess with this uh, primer bar too much. So I can just run it partially down, go ahead and do my size, make sure that I cam over, install my primer, make sure my cartridge is nice and centered up, and then install my primer. So I'm going to go ahead and work through these, and then once I get them finished up, I'll bring you back. Okay guys, there's our 50 cartridges, all sized. We've got our primers in. So this is a good chance to do the inspections, making sure that our primers are all sub flush. They're all seated to the correct depth. None of them are protruding um, at the top of the cases. But this is why I like using the load block um, like I mentioned earlier, start uh, with the case mouse up, and then as I run, I can put them down to make sure I didn't miss a process, and it provides a great opportunity to do some inspections. All right, guys, it's going to wrap up this video, but uh, what we accomplished, we've got all of our cartridges sized and primed. We've double-checked everything. We've set up our die. So now uh, in the next video, we're going to do the uh, case mouth expansion we're going to put the powder in seat the bullet and crimp i wanted to spend some more time on this video uh, just to kind of go over some more of the basics on loading up the press uh, setting our die and so on and we'll spend a lot of time on the powder measure 
uh, in the next video. So there's probably going to be two or three videos in, in this series. But, um, you know, one thing I wanted to say, go, working on a single stage press, there is something about it. It's more organic. You really feel that you're, you're an extension in the process. You get more of a feel of what's going on. There's more detail involved. Um, and then when you get on like a big progressive, like a Dylan, and don't get me wrong, I love my Dylan XL 750. I love spending time over there, but it's just very industrial. I mean, it's, you're cranking out rounds. Um, it's not as intimate as the single stage. And uh, if you just love to reload, and sometimes it's good just to slow down and just reload. Just reload. It's very therapeutic to me anyways. Um, I can clear my head, I'm focusing on something, and uh, again, it's just, it's just very organic and it feels like an extension of myself going into each cartridge and each process. So that's, that's, just, that's just my opinion on it and, and I enjoy, I just love reloading and, and this is just every little piece, each press has its own personality and I just really love uh, working on the single stage and getting back um, into doing some major reloading on it. So this was, uh, hopefully it's going to be good for you. I know it's good for me. So um, guys, please feel free to check me out over on Facebook and Instagram at uh, Squatch Reloading. Um, go find me over on the Reloaders Network. All of our videos are over there. And uh, until next time, guys, oh wait, the chicks, they're still over there doing good in my basement. So they're just gonna live here for a little bit. So if you hear some chirping, it's, it's my wife's chicken. She's growing over there. But uh, <laughs> enough of that. If uh, you like these videos, please like and subscribe, uh, share, comment, smart remarks, all that. Uh, I, love, I love everything about it. So until next time, guys, God bless.